Hi, my name's Will, and I'll be taking you through how to create an income statement from scratch using the Financial Report Builder, or FRB. As you can see, I'm just in the accounting app within Financial Force. Uh, to get to the Financial Report Builder app, I just need to go to the top left where I can see the app launcher, all of the nine dots, select into there, and I can type in FF for Financial Force and then Report Builder. Select into that app. I'm now in the app for Financial Report Builder. And as you can see here, there's quite a long list of reports already built and pre configured in this test environment. These can be found on the community page inside Einstein Bytes, where you can install these pre configured reports. Uh, but we're going to create an income statement from scratch, so we need to go to the top right and select the new button. In here, you'll have a number of different options you can select when creating a new report. First of all, we have report type. In here, we have a bunch of different reports you can build. We've got trial balances, income statements, balance sheets, and these will be more pre-configured and out of the box when you select into these. But we're going to select general for now because we are creating a report just from scratch. And on the right, you'll see number of table configurations, which is basically how many reports you want to create. This is just reports that you can build on top of other reports. For now, we'll just select one. Below that, you'll see number of filter configurations. This is just how many filters you want to show in your reports. We'll just show two for now. And in the report name, just whatever name you'd like to call your report. We'll call ours income statement dual, just as we are creating an income statement in dual value. And in the description, uh, you can fill that in if you require. And I'll hit save, and that should create that new report for us. In here, you'll see no data whatsoever as we haven't begun the configuration of this report yet. Now to configure your reports in Financial Report Builder, you'll need to create lenses within Analytics and this is where your data will pull from. Now, if we select the cog in the top right of this report, you'll see it says configuration. If we select into here, you can see it's asking for a data set. So data sets are part of analytics and that's where your lenses are built from. Uh, if I select the drop down, you'll see, you'll see the number of data sets that are currently in this test environment. Uh, for now, though, we'll go into analytics and actually start the build of our lenses and therefore the build of our report. So if I cancel out of there. Now to get to analytics, we need to go to the app launcher in the top left and type in analytics studio. You should see the option first off. It should just be called analytics studio. If we select into there, it should bring it up in a new tab. And it's always recommended to have a tab open in Financial Report Builder and a tab open in Analytics when you are building these reports, as you may switch between the two quite a lot. Now, to start our income statement off, we need to build a lens for sales revenue. So to build a lens, we basically need to go to the search bar in the top, select into there, and we need to select a data set to build the lens from. So we're going to use the data set financial transactions. As you can see, see here, it's on my most recent items. But if you just wanted to type it in, you can do that also. So if I just type in financial transactions, and it should just be the only option there. And all I need to do is select into this data set and straight away, it will bring you onto the screen of building a new lens. Now, we don't want a bar chart to come across this report, so we need to change this to a compare table. So in the top right, you'll see it's in chart mode currently, and we have the options to switch it to table mode or query mode, but we want to switch it to table mode. In here, you'll see a couple different options, but compare table is where we want to go for this. So in here, you'll see a very generic number and count of rows. So obviously this isn't what we need to show in our reports. So we're gonna make some changes to these values. 
So let's add a new column and we'll add a dual value just as this is what our report will be showing. And if we just remove that count of rows as that's not necessary. Yeah, as you can see here, it's showing blank because we've got no filters or no groupings against it. And if I was to add a grouping, we could add general ledger account name, for example. And you would see here, it's, it's calculating the sum of dual value of all of these different general ledger accounts and it's showing it for all time. Yeah, but we don't need that in this report currently. So we're just gonna remove that by just selecting the drop down and pressing delete. Now, if we wanted to change the name of this column, as this is the column that's going to be coming through to your report in FRB, we can just select the drop down and go to edit this column. In here, all you need to do in this column header box is just type in the new column header. So I'm just going to type in dual. Once I hit apply, that should change the name of the column. There you go, let's change the name of the column for us. I can just close out of that and it'll take me back to the main screen for the lens. Now let's add a filter to show our sales revenue. So to go to add a filter, just go to that filter tab and you'll see the plus icon where we can add a new filter. In here, it's just a search bar and we can search for, for tw uh, trial balance two. In here, it's just a pick list basically, and we can select the TB2 levels we want to show, and we want to show sales revenue. Now this TB levels may be set up different in your environments. This is just for my test environment, and these are the levels I have for TB2. So I'll select sales revenue and hit apply. Now you do also have the option to add another filter or even filter logic. If you see this drop down in the top right, you'll have the option to add filter logic. But for now, that's all we need for our sales revenue. As you can see here, we've got quite a large value for sales revenue. And that's all we need to do in this lens. So if we head to the top right, we'll see the button for save. We can hit save. In here, we'll want to name the name of the lens, something recognizable and something to reference the name of the data set that we created it from. So if we just take that out and we type in FT for financial transactions, we just do a dash and type in sales revenue. And then you can add a description if you want, uh, but this app at the bottom is where you really need to take focus on. So if we just select the drop down onto there, if you select my private app, which is there as default most of the time, that means only you can see this lens and therefore only you can see the data within the report in Financial Report Builder. We don't want that, so we'll save it in the shared app so everyone can see the report that we are building. And then we can hit save. Now, once that's saved, we can go back to our other tab and start building our report from that lens. So if I just go back to the other tab, you'll see the report we created earlier and we can go to the cog in the top right and start the configuration. In here, we'll need to select the data set that we built that lens from. As you can see, financial transactions is the top for me. So I'll select into there and hit next. In this lens configuration, we have the options to add lens and add calculations. So add lenses is basically just adding the lenses that we've just previously built in analytics and adding calculations is more of an Excel format. So we can add some rows and we could add gross margins, net profits, net profit margins, and things like that. Well, for now, let's just add our lens that we've just built. So section, we don't need to add anything there for a lens. For alias, we need a unique alias for each lens and each calculation. So let's add sales rev just as our alias. In the lens, it should be the, the top one on the list as it, it does show your most recently saved lens at the top. So we can just select that one, FT sales revenue. Now we'll just hit save just to show you what that looks like, but it'll be very basic reports. It's just going to show what we showed in the lens previously, and that's not helpful at all. Uh, now we should want to add a couple columns to this report just to make it look a bit more helpful. Uh, so let's add one for TB2 
So trial balance two and general ledger account name. So if I just go to that cog and select dimension columns, and it'll bring up this, this second tab along from the lens configuration tab. Here we can select the top right button, add column. In here, it just says dimension, but you don't really need to think that's a dimension within financial force at all. This is just a column your report is going to show. So if we just add trial balance to, and we can also add column again and search for general ledger account name. We'll select that one too. These can be reorganized by just selecting the up and down arrows on each of these separate rows. But for now, we'll just hit save and we'll see how that looks. As you can see, this is looking more like a report now. We've got a TB2 level and we've got our general ledger account name showing just for sales revenue as that's the only lens we've actually built so far in analytics. You may see here that all of these values are negative as this is just the way sales hit the general ledger accounts within financial force. To change that, we can just go back to that cog, go to the lens configuration, and you'll see a few check boxes along the right hand side of this lens. So show, that's just if you want to show it in the actual report. So obviously we'll need that ticked. Highlight is if you want to highlight the rows, which we don't want that really highlighted. Reverse sign is what we need for this. So this will reverse the values of that lens, turning them from a negative to a positive. So if we take that and hit save, as you can see now, they've all turned into a positive. Now there is some extra configuration pieces you can do with these values. So just in this formatting configuration button, just the, the pencil, you can select into that button and you'll have a number of different config options you can choose. Things like decimal numbers, scaling, number colors, and just minuses or brackets for negative numbers as well. You can also choose the reverse sign option. So you can, that, that's on the report as a whole rather than lens by lens. So you can turn the whole report to a negative or a positive. If I just leave it the way it is at the minute and just hit save. And back to our report. Now let's add a total row just to give us a total of the sales revenue. So if I just go back to that cog, go to lens configuration and let's add a calculation using this button. In here, let's add a section name for this calculation just so it shows on the report. Let's type in total sales revenue in the alias. Again, it has to be unique for each calculation in each lens. So let's type in just a little alias for it. And in the calculation, all we need to do, very similar to Excel calculations and formulas, we just need to type in sum, open brackets, and let's copy and paste the alias of that first lens, and then close brackets. And that will give us the total of that lens. And on the right hand side, we will want to highlight this row as it will look better when presenting our report. So if I select highlight and hit save, we should now see the total sales revenue on our report. Next up, we're going to add our cost of sales. So we need to go back to analytics to create our new lens for cost of sales. So I just go back to that other tab we've got open in Tableau analytics. Uh, we can just clone this lens as it may save us some time. So it is a very time saving when building a report. So if I just go to that drop down in the top right of the lens I've just built and I can hit clone in new tab. And there you go, it's created a clone of that sales revenue lens. And you can see it's got the name of copy of FT sales revenue. We can change that when we're saving the report. But all we need to do here is because we're changing it from sales revenue to cost of sales, we just need to go to the filters and change that trial balance to level to cost of sales. So we'll deselect sales revenue and we'll go up to cost of sales and hit apply. And there you go, that's our cost of sales value. That's all you need to do to change that lens. So all we need to do is hit save now and we'll just make a change to the name of this lens. So if I just take out sales revenue, let's just type in cost of sales and it's being saved in the shared app. So let's save. 
Now that's saved, we can go back to our report again. And let's add that lens to this report. So again, back to that config button and then into lens configuration. And here we can just add that new lens. So for the alias, let's type in cost of sales. And then let's add that most recent lens, which is just there, the FT cost of sales. Now that's added, let's just save us some time and add a calculation just to add the total cost of sales. And we'll add the section name here. Just total cost of sales and then alias will just add its total cost of sales. And for the calculation, very similar to the, the previous one we did for the sales revenue, we can just type in sum, open brackets, and then let's just copy and paste that alias and then close brackets. And again, we'll want to highlight that total, total row and then we can hit save. And there you go. That's looking more like an income statement. And we're now showing our cost of sales and then we've got a total at the bottom. Next up, let's add a couple of calculations to this report. So if we go back to that cog in the top right and then back into lens configuration and we can use the button add calculation in the top right. As we're gonna do two, for gross margin and gross margin percentage, we can select this button twice. So let's just press that twice and we'll see two new rows at the bottom. So let's add a gross margin calculation first of all. If I just type in a section and alias for that. Then in the calculation, let's just do a calculation for gross margin. So let's just do a sum of the sales rev, referencing the aliases prior to this, and then I can hit minus and sum and cost of sales, referencing the alias above the cost of sales also. So we'll highlight that column, that row, sorry. And let's add a gross margin percentage also. So let's just type in a section and an alias for this. And let's add a calculation as well. Let's type in gross margin divided by, we'll just type in the sum of sales revenue, just referencing that alias again. Uh, and we'll want to multiply this by 100. So that at the start, let's just add 100, multiply that whole calculation. Let's close the brackets on this. And there you go. Now we do want to add a percentage symbol to the end of this calculation. So all we need to do is do an and sign and then let's add a percentage symbol in between speech marks. Let's select into there and hit percentage symbol that will show our percentage symbol after the number. Now you can do this with currency symbols also. So if you wanted to add a dollar or a pound sign, you could add that at the start of the calculation of the formula and that would show the symbol at the start of your value. So let's highlight that row as well and hit save. As you can see, both of those are coming through the report and they do look like they're calcula calculating correctly. Next up, we can add our operating expenses to this report. So again, we're gonna to have to create a new lens for this. So if we go back to the tab we have open in analytics, and as you can see, we're back to our cost of sales lens. So in here, we'll just want to clone this one again. So in the top right, the drop down, and then clone in a new tab. Uh, in here, we'll have to make some slightly different changes to show our operating expenses. But if we just go to the filters, and we can see we've still got our TB2 filter of cost of sales. So we'll want to make a change to that. So let's just go into here and rather than selecting every single TB2 level that we want to see, it's probably best to save us some time and the basically have the filter not equal to cost of sales or sales revenue, which we've already shown on the report. So to do that, we can select the operator drop down, and we can select does not equal. Now, as you can see, it's deselected anything that was selected prior to this. And we can just go down and select cost of sales and sales revenue and then hit apply. We also want to add another filter just to have general ledger account type, just to ensure 
any value that does show up show up should be on a profit and loss statement. So we just go to that plus icon to add a new filter and we can type in general ledger and we should have an option for general ledger account type as you can see at the bottom here. In here, you'll have the options of balance sheet, profit and loss and shareholders equity. In here, we'll just select profit and loss and hit apply. And that shows us our operating expenses. So let's save that lens. Let's just rename it to, and let's just call it operating expenses. And it's saved in that shared app. So let's hit save. Now let's add that to our report again. We can go back to that other tab with our reports open and hit the cog button and then go back to lens configuration. Now let's add a lens just in this top right button again to just add that option. And then in the section, we'll leave that blank and we'll type in an alias. Let's just type in OPEX just to reference operating expenses and then we'll add that lens to the report. So as you can see, third one down is the one we've just saved. So let's select into that. And let's just add a calculation to give us the total operating expenses as well. So let's just type that in, total operating expenses. And we'll just add an alias for that as well. In the calculation, we'll just add sum then OPEX and close that brackets and then hit highlight as well. So if we save that, you'll see a lot of operating expenses has been added to our report below the gross margin calculations. If I just scroll down to the bottom there, we should see our calculation for total operating expenses. So that's looking all right. And now we can add things like net profit and net profit percentages calculations. So let's go back to our lens configuration and let's do that. So let's just add two calculations by pressing this add calculation button twice again. Now let's scroll to the bottom and we've got our two new calculations to work on. So let's just type in net profits in this first section. Let's just type in an alias for that as well. And in here, we'll want to do sum of gross margin minus the sum of OPEX. Let's highlight that row as well. We'll add the net profit percentage column while the row, sorry, while we're doing that. And we can just type in net profit percentage. And an alias for that also. And in here, very similar to the, the gross margin percentage formula. Let's just add that again, basically. And we can just add net profits using the alias above and then divide it by sales revenue, sorry. So if I just do sum open brackets and then the alias we first used for that first lens for sales revenue, we can add that there. Again, we'll want to multiply this by 100. So if I go to the start of that calculation and just type in 100 and then multiply. I'll close those brackets like I did before. And let's just add an unsign and a percentage symbol just to give us a percentage at the end of that number. Let's highlight that also and let's hit save. And if I scroll down a bit, you'll be able to see we've got our net profit calculation. I'll just scroll up a bit to check if that's coming through correctly. It looks like it's coming through correctly. And we've got a net profit percentage also at the bottom. So now that's also looking pretty correct as well. 34% of our sales revenue. Next, we can start adding filters to our reports. So as you can see here, as we selected at the start of creating this report, we selected two filter configurations. So that's why we have two boxes here just for the two filters. So we would go to the configuration button in the top right of each of these boxes to add the lens that we are going to create. And that would then create the filter on the report. So let's go ahead and create those lenses. 
So let's do a company filter, first of all. So let's go into that other tab, back into analytics, and let's just clone this lens. In here, we won't need any of those filters, so we can just go into the filters and click the X icon on each of those filters. If I just go back to the data tab, and then we can add a group by column, and let's just add company name. As you can see, those are just the test companies that I have in this test environment. So if I just hit save on the top right, that's all we'll need. I'll just write a name for that lens. And just make sure it's saved in the shared app and then hit save. <clears throat> then I can go back to my reports in Financial Report Builder and then I can click that cog on the top right of the first filter box. In here, I can add a filter name. Let's just say company. And then I can add the lens that I've just created just by selecting the lens there. Now you can add filter logic to this, or you can just leave it as equals. Just look at the drop down. It's got options to leave as not equals and contains. Uh, the values at the bottom is an option just to set a default value. So if you wanted to show, for example, Merlin Technologies Limited, every time you open the report, you'd select it here and you'd select save. But let's just leave it blank for now. So it shows all companies values when we see the report. So there you go, that's our filter added. You can see it in the top right. So now we have that values box where we can add each of our companies. So you can multi-select these. So if I wanted to see limited, for example, it's gonna show me the values for limited. And then if I added another one, for example, if I added ink, for example, it's gonna show me the values for both Merlin, Technology, Merlin Technologies Limited and Merlin Technologies Inc. And very simply, to remove one of these, you can just select the X icon on the right of either of these companies. So we'll just remove Inc's data and you'll see the values change back to only show Merlin Technologies Limited. If I just X out of there. Now that you've added the company filter, we can go ahead and look into adding a date filter. So there is a couple options when it comes to adding a date filter to your reports. So you can do it the same way we've done the company filter via a lens in analytics, or there is another option to do. You can use the soft date functionality within the report builder itself. So we'll show you that one first. So to, to go to soft dates, basically you need to go to that cog again in the top right of the report. If I select into there and you'll see the option at the bottom is soft dates. So I select into there. You'll see it's inactive at the minute. So we'll need to activate that. So soft date dimension. So that's just the category it's picking up the date from basically. So best practice is to choose financial period end date, just so we, we make sure we get all the values, all the data for that period. So I just type in financial period. We should see the option there, financial period end date. We'll select that for time period. We'll just go with month. Start date is just the start of your financial year. So in this test environment, it will be January. Current period date override, we'll leave that blank for now, but we'll come back to that one as it's not required to do it from scratch. In this bottom section, you'll see a similar kind of layout to what you saw when we're adding lenses and calculations. But for this, it's adding period formats. So these, each one of these rows will basically be separate columns once you've enabled this soft date functionality. So for example, here we can do a year to date just for this year, and we can add another row for last year to date. And then we can have those two come up as columns in the report and we can have a, a little comparison between the two of them. So let's add a current year to date column. So this is just the name of the column I'm entering as the label. And in the periods format box, we can just add the current year to date option. And then we can add another period format, just select that button and we can scroll down. And we can add the last year to date. And it should be in here somewhere. There is quite a lot of options you do have, but there, there's the last year to date. And we'll select that and hit save. So you will see that this isn't the report that you do want to see. You'll see that these two 
columns that we've just added current year to date and last year to date are all going into the same column, which is not ideal. So we'll want to split those two out. To do that, we need to go back to the card, back to soft dates, and you'll see the option for pivot table in the top right. So we just want to check that box and hit save. And this should split those columns into two, like so. So there you go, there's, there's a little comparison. Obviously, there isn't much data in for this current year to date at the minute. So the comparison isn't that great between the two, but that's something we can modify now. So that soft period date override is something we can change just basically to see the date for any, any date we select in that box. Basically, we can go back to any time in the past few years. So if I just go back to that soft date functionality, current period date override, if I select, for example, let's go to January last year and hit save. You'll see the values will change. So that will show the current year to date as of the January of last year, 2021, and it will show the last year to date of the year 2020. So those values are coming through correctly, it looks like. So now we can start looking into adding some calculation columns. So first off, let's have a look at calculating a variance column, just to, to find the difference between the current year to date and last year to date. So to do that, we can go to the cog in the top right of the report and then go to measure columns. In here, again, a very similar layout to what we've seen. We can add columns here, which will basically be calculations upon the period formats that we've put in the soft dates. So let's just add a column and let's call it variance. And we can just add a unique alias for that. And in the measure calculation box, you do have the option to select this predefined calculation link. And these, this will give you basically already built calculations based on the data that you've already put in the system. So we'll just go to search calculations. You'll see you've got quite a number of options that it's given you, but let's choose measure of last year to date first. And just in that dual currency, just to make sure we've got that dual. And then all we can do is hit minus, and then we'll go back to that predefined calculation link and let's add the current year to date. So you'll see there, third one down, measure current year to date dual. We can just hit apply and that's all we need to do. But as you can see there, it's just got that first column, the total of that first column, and then it's just gonna subtract that second column. So we can hit save there. As you can see, we've got a variance column now on our report, just comparing the two different year to date columns. Now that we've shown the soft date functionality, we can look into creating a date filter via the lenses in analytics. So we'll want to remove everything that we've just done there around the soft dates. So we'll go to the soft dates, make that inactive. We'll change the pivot table back to unchecked and then we'll go to the measure columns and remove that column and then we can hit save and that should return us back to our original report so let's go ahead and create that new lens to give us that date filter so if we just go back to that other tab just where we're in analytics and we can just clone this lens once again so we can remove the company name from the group by section now just by selecting the drop down and hitting delete we also want to add a new column for the financial year and period as that's what we will be using as the date filter. So financial year and period will be there, the bottom there. So I'll select into that and we'll remove the dual column as we don't need that. So that's, yeah, we've got no filters. So yeah, that's all we need on that lens. So we can just hit save and let's just rename that. Let's just hit save in the shared app. Go back to my report and let's add that filter. So I go to the configuration button and this time we'll go to measure as it's a date and we can change the name of that filter. Let's call it financial year and period. Let's select that lens we've just created. 
the measure should calculate again automatically. And you've got this option for filter logic again. If you chose equals, you could just select it by one period and the report would show only one period at a time. But if you wanted to show, for example, in between two different periods, it, it can be handy doing that instead. So let's pick that for now. And again, you can have default values, which would be automatically selected when you went into the, the report. So I can just hit save for now with those blank values, and then we can make changes while we're in the report. So at the minute, it's showing all of the, the values for all time. But if I wanted just to show, for example, 2021, January to June, I can just go into here and let's just type in 2021 and then 006, uh, 001, sorry, for January and 2021, 006 for June. So these values are the financial year and period, year and periods in financial force. This is how they're set out in terms of the year and then the period. So we'll just hit apply and that should change our report to show us those values. So as you can see, the values have changed and that's showing us only January to June of last year. Now we can also build a report which would split each of our company's data across into different columns. To do that, we'll just clone this report for now so we don't delete the data in here. And we'll just call it something different. For example, we'll just add a dash and type in multi-company at the end of that. And then we just need to hit save and that will bring us to a new report. Now in here to add the companies across the top and split them out, we can go back to the config in the top right and go to dimension columns. In here, as we did earlier, we can select the add column and then we can add company name as the dimension. Now to make sure these values go across the top of the report, we'll make sure we need to select the pivot table checkbox in the top right, just to make sure the company name is pivoted across the top. So once we've selected that, we can hit save and we should see the companies now across the top of your report. So I can scroll along and I should see every single company with data in it. To add a total column at the end, as that will most likely be very helpful, we can just go back to that cog in the top right and hit measure columns, then we can add a column. Let's just call it total dual. And let's add an alias for this. And you won't really have to type a calculation in for here as it should have already got one for you in the predefined calculation link. So you can go to that link and you can hit the search bar and yep, you'll have the total dual calculation just sitting there. So we can just select that and hit apply. And this will show us a column, a total column of basically all the company's values just at the end of your report. So if I select that and hit save, and I'll scroll along to the right hand side, you should see a total column with the same values we saw on our earlier report. This is just basically a total of all of your company's data throughout the periods that selected as we, we've got no filters on at the minute though. So it's just all time, all companies is in this column. So now that we've built our report, we can add a drill table to the report. This basically lets us dive deeper into the values that we do have on the report and lets us see into the individual transactions themselves. So to do that, we can add the drill just using this button on top of your report. In here, very similar to creating the report initially that we've just built, you'll have the option to choose the data set. It is recommended you use the same data set that you've used previously to build the report. But however, you can use different data sets if you wish to. I do recommend using the financial balances data set just because it will give you the links to each individual transactions. This allows you to select into those links and it will take you to the record of the transaction itself. So for example, it will take you to a journal just from selecting a link through this drilling table. We need to build the lenses first so we, we can cancel out of there for now and we'll come back to that. So if I just go to my other tab, just in analytics, and we can start building a lens for the drilling table. So 
we'll need to go to the top and we'll need to search for financial balances. So if I just type in financial balances again, we'll see only one option comes up and it's financial balances data set. So we can select into that data set. And as you can see, it's the same as we've seen before with the financial transactions data set. We'll need to go to the table mode and the compare table again. In here, we'll start building our drill table. So basically, this is the, the table you'll see when you drill into a value. So we'll want, we can add as many columns as we want into here, basically. So first off, let's add a dual value column, as this is the, the value we'll actually want to see. And we can remove that count of rows. And let's add a couple of columns into the group by section. So first off, let's just add company name and add that. And we can also add, let's add transaction number as well. Transaction document number. So as you can see, these are in blue and have an underlining. So this will allow us to, to click on them and go in, into the individual record itself. So you see, you have some cap entries here at the top and you've got some journals and payable invoices and sales invoices down in this list. So, well, for example, you can add as many different columns as you do want to this drilling table, but we'll leave that for now and we can just hit save. Let's just call it the drilling table. Again, referencing the financial balances data set and just type in drill table. Then just to make sure, we need to make sure we save it in the shared app so everyone can access this drilling table as well and hit save. Now we can go back to the original report and let's add the drill table. So just select that button in the top of your report. Let's choose the financial balances data set as this is where we just built our drilling table and we can hit next. In here, you'll have, you'll have to fill out these target fields just for the drill configuration. So just simply go into the search field and type in whatever's on the left column. Let's just type in these quickly. And that's all we need for that. So now we can move on to the other tabs we have over here. So we can go to the lens configuration tab. Very similar to what we've seen before when we created our report. So we can add that lens now, just that drill lens that we've just created. Let's just reference it in the alias and then let's add that lens. We can also add a calculation just to give us a total at the bottom of that lens as that's always helpful. Let's just call it total. And let's just add that calculation, just sum, and then the alias of the drill table. And then let's close brackets and let's highlight that row as well. So I can hit save. And there you go. All of our values in the source report that we're on have an underlining underneath them. This basically means we can select into them and this will take us to our drill table we just created. So let's just select into one of these as an example. So let's select into this 162,000. In here, we have our drill table. So as you can see, we've got our company name, which is one of the columns we selected. And we've got the transaction document number, which was another column we selected. And we've got our sum of dual value on the right hand side and with our total column along the bottom. Like I said before, we can add as many columns as you want here. It's really unlimited. And as I also mentioned before, you do have the option to use these links to take you to the, the individual record itself. So let's select one of them just to show you. And we can select on this sales invoice just in the middle here, and it should take us to a new tab and to the sales invoice record itself. Oh, well, there's your sales invoice. I hope that was helpful. That was building an income statement from scratch in dual value in a couple of different ways.
Thanks for listening.